Welcome back to the Capstone Podcast. We are here for the second episode of the week after we covered the uh, Thursday night game, which went on last night. Um, Falcons versus Bears. I mean, Falcons versus uh, Panthers. Uh, you'll you'll know how that goes by the time you're listening to this. So we're going to do the whole rest of our normal show. Um, dive into easy money, make the case, uh, Sunday night and Monday night. So we're coming to you live from the future. Basically, that's how it's going to happen. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's kick it off here. We're going to go with easy money. Um, I think like there's a couple of really good games this week. Does anybody want to kick it off? I'll kick it off. All right. Sammy so, Sunshine. Um, I'm going to bet on the best team in football as an underdog this week, and I'm going to take Pittsburgh Steelers plus four against the Baltimore Ravens. Uh, on the road in Baltimore, I think Baltimore's going to buy, correct? Yeah, uh, yes. yes. Where they uh, nearly escaped Philadelphia. And, yeah, a um, little time to allow them to, you know, get healthy and whatnot. But um, where was I going with this? Steelers coming off a huge win against the previously 5-0 and Tennessee Titans. And I just keep – I believe they keep the momentum going. That defense is looking still as good as ever. And if they can – force Lamar to throw the ball. Not that he's not a you know a good thrower. He's still a solid thrower, but they make their money off their off the run game. And that front seven for Pittsburgh, I believe, can neutralize them enough. And the fact that they're being given four points, I know they're on the road, but I see them winning this game outright. And so I've definitely taken the plus four. It's my make the case, Sam. So uh, we, we can get mm-hmm. to that later. But I, I'm, I'm echoing a lot of what you, uh, what you got going there. But uh, we'll, mm-hmm. we'll get to that later. Yeah, mm-hmm. I mean, I, I didn't have this game on anything, but I will make a couple quick points because I was going to take Pittsburgh too just as a side, mm-hmm. little side thing. Um, I mean, Baltimore, they have the 31st ranked passing offense, which obviously isn't that good. Um, which no. is act- well, okay. very bad, actually. Marlon Humphrey missed practices, too. I think he's got an illness. I don't think it's well, COVID-19 right. related. But um, even if he's even if he's like not 100%, if he's playing with like a little bit of like the sniffles or something like that, I mean, that's still, that's still relevant. And I mean, Pittsburgh, they have the second-ranked rushing defense, so you figure they stop the run. Uh, you kind of just have to worry about Lamar Jackson throwing the football. And like Sam said, he just hasn't really been too impressive this year. It hasn't taken a step up. Uh, so a lot's going to be riding on his shoulders – uh, I could see both. The, the only thing that scares me about Pittsburgh is their offense. We saw them almost blow that lead at the back mm-hmm. half of the game last week against the Titans. Um, but that's when their defense kind of stepped up and held, held tight. But uh, Pittsburgh's defense is, is their team. And I, I think Pittsburgh is, is a good plus four, plus three and a half, went out, right, whatever. I think a big part of that last week when they blew that lead was they kind of took their foot off the pedal. And, mm-hmm. you know, they weren't being as aggressive offensively. And granted, I don't see them going up, you know, like – three scores this week against Baltimore, but so I believe they'll keep that pet on a uh, pet on the throttle or foot on the throttle. There we go. And then pedal to the metal. close. And then, so the big thing would be, you know, like they'll be able to stop the design runs. I believe it's a matter of keeping Jackson contained and mm-hmm. letting him not break off in these broken plays, you know, for a 35 yard rush. That's kind of the X factor in, in, in the morning this game. Yeah, I mean, I'll, I'd echo everything also. I feel like the speed on Pittsburgh's defense is enough. Uh, Lamar Jackson struggles against elite competition. Not super struggles, but, like, he's, he's – he's, I mean, every time he plays the Chiefs, like, the Chiefs don't have a great defense, but he still doesn't run the score up like that offense should and really take charge. And, I mean, this defense is going to present a much bigger challenge than Kansas City's did. Um, and, and they're going to have to put up more than 20 points to win this game, I would say. Some might say Baltimore for us. That? Some might say Baltimore are frauds, but <laughs> I mean, some I might go that say, far. But are yeah. you saying that? some might say that? But are you saying that? Some are saying some, that, yes. some, 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 yeah, some, some, some. 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 Am I part some. of that? Some, maybe. Uh, yeah, it's okay. okay. <laughs> Leave us guessing. Leave us guessing. <laughs> we'll right, tune in next week for find your, out uh, next for week's you. Dragon Ball Z. <laughs> <laughs> Um, all right, I'm going to take the next pick. I'm going to go with the Los Angeles Rams minus three and a half over the Miami Dolphins. Mm-hmm. Uh, look, the line, uh, what was it, Rams versus Bears? I mean, the Bears are a 5-1 team. They were on top of the a- uh, NFC North, and the line was Rams minus six. I know it was in L.A., so it's probably kind of contributing to that. 
But what did the Rams do that game, by the way? Uh, they won. So I'm going to have to give won? Mano props. Uh-huh. I don't want to do okay. it because we Thank all you. got it wrong. But yep. Yeah, yeah, Mano got that. But <laughs> look, if you're looking at this week, I know you have the Rams minus three and a half. Against Miami, the Miami Dolphins, they're coming off a bye, yes, and they're a very well-coached team by Brian Flores, but it's Tua Tagovailoa's first NFL start. And I don't think Aaron Donald, potentially the best player, if not top three in the NFL, coming at you is exactly what you want. Uh, that team can just create pressure. Uh, they, I mean, he, um, I got to imagine he has some sort of a rapport with his receivers um, in practice. I mean, he's been getting reps all year. I got to imagine he took first-team reps throughout the year at least got in on it with the first team guys um but i mean this line's way too low for me i'm just gonna have to stick with the rams i think they're just a much better team their offense seemed to have figured it out against a really good bears team um on monday night but yeah we'll see i can't imagine what it would be like to be a pro quarterback making their debut as well as 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 good as tua is and look across the, the the center and see aaron donald like breathing like a bull with like you know like steam coming out of his nose and then coming at you with steam coming out of his ears and even if you get good protection on him if you double him or chip him or something like that the dude you're gonna throw to is being covered by Jalen Ramsey like that's yeah, I mean, it's, it's gonna be Devontae debut. Parker yeah it's a it's a tough it's a tough debut for for uh for Tua I'm excited to see him play I don't anticipate him doing much but I mean if you're gonna put him out there for game one you might as well put him against one of the best corners in the league and the best pass rusher in the league see what he's got you know yeah so I mean I want to echo what you're talking about with the Rams defense um they haven't allowed more than a field goal in the second half oh they only okay they've only allowed more than a field goal in the second half one time this year um so their defense is playing real good on the back half of the football games uh Sean McVay in general is seven and two against the spread when playing in playing on the east coast but I just have like there's something that I that I can't really figure out about Miami. Um, Brian Flores must have really, or, or at least Tua must really be lighting it up in practice, uh, or really gave Brian Flores enough to make the move to move on from Fitzpatrick. I mean, Fitzpatrick is is a great quarterback, or not great. He's a good quarterback. He gets the job done, and this is a winning football team. Um, but why bench a player like Ryan Fitzpatrick if you're not confident in Tua? And especially if Brian Flores thinks his team's going to make the playoffs. Uh, I don't know what kind of move he's making here, but uh, I think L.A. runs, runs right with this football game. Yeah. I, mean, I don't want to harp on the football side of it way too much, but it, it, this line is just like it, – it's it doesn't make sense to me. It almost feels like a trap, but I'm going to see through this trap, and that's going to be my, uh, my easy money pick. <laughs> I, I was thinking this is the exact same thing with – like, like what do you like? What is Vegas know for Miami? Here? But yeah, what if we thought the same thing last week with Green Bay and they just beat the hell out of this Texans? So. I don't know. Mm-hmm. I think Vegas. You, they look at Tua and they look at arguably one of the best college football quarterbacks ever. But you also look at his his injury he came off of and how long it, his football career was almost over forever because of that injury. So I, like you said, I don't know what they're looking at. Um, I guess it's just Jared Goff on the road, but who knows? Mm. I, I don't know. Man, are you want to go? Because I have a feeling you have – I have two easy monies, but I feel like you're going to take one of them. Yeah, I have Saints minus four. That's against not the Bears. one. That is not one okay. of them. Okay. Okay. Um, for a couple reasons here. I was watching I, I was watching the Rams-Bears game, right? And I'm looking at this Bears offense. And I'm, they're bad. They're, like, pretty bad. Um, they're not, like, probably the worst in the league. But they're, they're probably up there in, in terms of, like, relative shittiness to the rest of the league. Um, and they can't score, right? They don't have a, 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 a good enough quarterback to really force the ball um, in situations where, where guys like Tom Brady or Aaron Rodgers or Russell Wilson can, like, force it and you're going to get a good thing. Like, Nick Foles can't do that, right? Especially if Allen Robinson is in the concussion protocol. If he doesn't practice this week and if he can't go this week, that's a big detriment um, to that Bears offense. Um, on the other side of that ball, the Bears defense, solid, but um, – and the Saints offense hasn't been able to find a rhythm without Michael Thomas. Uh, they think he's going to play, but uh, well, he we're still remains- today. He practiced today, but if he goes and punches someone, then, then he's not going to play. <laughs> um, even if that's, he's punching CD Deuce, if he that's- if he punches CD Deuce, then uh, then then he's not going to play again. Um, I I think it's going to be, I think it's going to be a close enough game, but I think the Saints offense is is good enough to to get past a, a solid Bears defense, especially if the Bears can't come back down the field and score on offense. Um, 
It's an easy money pick for me. Saints minus four. Well, I, I agree, but you look, the temperature over there is going to be in the mid thirties and it's going to be really windy and, you know, breeze, breeze there's always breeze been talking the about, the, well, they're not, they're playing in Chicago. They've always I'm talked s- about, <laughs> they've always the talked dome. about breeze playing outside and he's always been fine on the road outside of the dome, but he's never really been playing well when it's really cold out. Um, but I think this game kind of is going to be dictated whether or not he has Michael Thomas and or Emmanuel Sanders. I think if he's lacking both of them, I think it's going to be a much closer game than people think. Um, but they're five and zero against the spread against Chicago. They're eight and one in their last nine road games. Um, so their big key to this game is keeping Breeze upright. If Breeze is if Breeze is upright and is able to throw, then I think they'll have a success. Even if it's checking down to Alvin Kamara, getting him away from Chicago's playmakers like Khalil Mack and Akeem Hicks. If they can get away from those guys and into like a, a secondary, which is also pretty solid, but Michael Thomas can make plays, Kamara can make plays, Emmanuel Sanders can make plays. I think it's I think it's uh, I think it's really offense versus defense here all right so um i do have two easy money picks and i was hoping somebody was going to take them so i don't have to make two picks but um <laughs> but my first one is going to be two green thursday you want to do two picks two pick I, I really take, do want to take do two one because one might be somebody's make the case okay and then if not i guess i'll do two make the case but that um <laughs> whatever so the first one for, what i'll take right now is green bay minus six and a half home against minnesota um Minnesota is on a downward spiral. Uh, their defense is really bad. They're giving up 413 yards a game. Uh, they're, give, they're giving up 32 points a game, which are both 30th in the NFL. Uh, they traded away Yannick Ngakwe, who leaded the team in sacks, forced fumbles, and, uh, and tackles for a loss, so you know kind of what they're thinking about at this time. Uh, Kirk Cousins is not good. Uh, 11 touchdowns, 10 interceptions. He threw three picks it last week against the Atlanta defense. So clearly he doesn't know what he's doing on the offensive side of the football. Uh, <laughs> we'll talk about the home team, the Green Bay Packers. Devontae Adams back and fully healthy. He balled out last week. He put the league on notice that he's back. Aaron Rodgers is a monster. 17 touchdowns, two interceptions, 1,600 yards passing. He knows how to throw the football. Um, when they played Minnesota week one, 43, they put up 43 points, 500 in 22 total yards, seven yards per play. Um, Green Bay has the lowest amount of turnovers in the league. They have yet to give up a fumble, and their offense ranks second in the league. So you're talking about one of the best offenses in the league against one of the worst defenses in the league, a division game, home at Lambeau. I don't think Aaron Rodgers lets this game slip by. I don't think it makes a difference if Aaron Jones plays or not because they proved last week that uh, you could plug in Jamal Adams and you could be absolutely okay. Their defense – Huh? Jamal, Jamal Williams. Williams. Jamal Williams. Sorry, Jamal I'm, Adams I'm, probably too. I, I, I'd give you the benefit of the doubt there. Jamal Adams could probably rush for some some good yards. Some decent yards. You give him a nice hole. <laughs> he's, an, he's an athlete. He's an athlete. Um, but you talk about arguably the best offense in the league with arguably the best quarterback in the league against a team who is trending in the downward direction. Um, I, I just think this is, this is very easy. I just don't think Aaron Rodgers. I think Aaron Rodgers and the offense blows him out. It's another two touchdown win for the Green Bay Packers. Go pack, right, go. So, yeah, I mean, that wraps up easy money. Let's move on to make the case. Um, all right, Nick, do you want to start it or do you want to wait? No, I want to wait. I want to wait. You want to wait? I guess okay. I, I can start since my make the case is Steelers plus three and a half and it was Sam's easy money. Um, so I don't, have to, I don't have to harp on it too long. But um, to me, this, this game feels we, – we talked last week about how, like, the home team gets three points pretty much automatically, right, just, like, by default almost. Mm-hmm. So to me, this feels like a very even game, right? And I, I think the Steelers are going to win outright. I think it's a big-time statement game. I think this is the, the game where they solidify themselves as the best team in the AFC. Um, but even if it's, like, down to the wire and Justin Tucker has to kick a field goal for – the game winner i still win i still cover that's fine by me um fact sam talked it's sam talked a lot about the the pittsburgh defense so i i can i can talk about the 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 ravens defense a little bit and how it relates to to um to ben roethlisberger uh roethlisberger is first in the nfl in throw release time so he gets rid of the ball the fastest i don't have the number exactly but it's like it's fast but it's it's fast. pretty fast, right? And that that's they they let their offensive guys make plays after the uh, make plays after the catch. Guys like Juju, guys like Deontay Johnson, Chase Claypool, even though he's like six foot nine, can can do it too. Um, so that matters when when the the Ravens are like blitzing dudes, right? If he can get rid of the ball quick, it doesn't matter who's on the offensive line. But the Steelers have a good one anyway. So I don't think I think they can neutralize a, a, a solid Baltimore defense here. So Steelers plus three and a half. That's my make the case. I agree. 
All right, um, I'll steal the next one. I'm going to go with the Buffalo Bills minus four against the New England Patriots. Mm-hmm. Um, I picked the Patriots last week, money line, kind of right at game time. I was like, you know what? I feel like they're going to get this done. They're home. They're playing San Fran, and I could not have been more wrong. Um, this week, they're going to Buffalo. Um, Cam Newton, I saw reports that he had, like, dead arm or something. Like, I, whatever that means, he couldn't throw the ball. Whether it was true or not, I mean, he still couldn't throw the ball, so that's fine. Um, we know what we're he, getting he's there. He's a bit of a drama queen. He is a drama queen, but, like, it, go out there and play football. Like, he, he looked so slow. The offense just looked anemic. Like, he looked bad. He did not look like Cam in shape and in his prime. Um, on the other side of the coin, I'm also not really impressed with Buffalo. Um, that's why this is my make the case and not my easy money. Uh, Buffalo lost to Tennessee, got absolutely waxed the week after Tennessee had all of the COVID um, running through their building. Short week, no practice, Tennessee waxed them. Next week, Bills go to play Kansas City. They lose that game. Then they get a bounce back game against the Jets. And they just absolutely crawled through that entire game. They still got the win, but they're crawling through. I think it's fair to say they struggled. They did struggle. They definitely struggled. The Jets put up a huge fight. They didn't cover the spread. Um, It went under. There was only 28 points in that entire game. Uh, But this week, I think, is different. Buffalo is home. Um, They were on the road, uh, I think. I'm incorrect. Uh, They were on the road the last four weeks. They're coming back home. They're playing New England. I, I think it's time to drop the allure of the New England Patriots name. Um, I feel like that garners them a lot of respect in Vegas. Um, Just the fact that they are the New England Patriots and the guy that coaches their team is their head coach. Um, I think that changes this week. This is a pretty low spread. Buffalo, I feel like, has a lot more firepower, and I'm I'm comfortable with taking Buffalo minus four. I mean, I want to go back, push back a little bit on this one because part of me wants to take New England here. Um, not to obviously, I don't think they're going to win the football game, but that's why it's a spread. And we're not betting straight up. Um, you talk about how Buffalo played last week against the New York jets and Buffalo doesn't have a running game. That's their problem is they have no running game and they're very one dimensional. Uh, and the temperature for this game is already predicting to be 40 degrees and windy. So it's going to be a game on the ground. And, you know, Bill Belichick's usually always got the ground game and they have Sony Michelle, uh, Damian Harris, Rex Burkhead, James White. They have four different uh, guys who can come out of the backfield. Granted, their offense is very bad. Uh, Cam's got two touchdowns, seven interceptions. The offense in general has 14 turnovers. Um, but New England, the first three weeks when they, you know, were kind of looking good, the first three weeks this year, they played uh, some, they, they played some pretty bad football, uh, some pretty bad defenses. They played Miami, who was 14th ranked. Seattle, who was 28, and the Raiders, who were 31st. And then the last three weeks when they've kind of gotten spanked around, they played Kansas City, who's got the 13th-ranked defense, Denver, who has the 7th, and San Francisco, who has the 8th. This week, Buffalo's ranked defense is 21st. Um, So there's some numbers that could be thrown out there that can kind of be put into England's favor, but you could also throw out numbers in Buffalo's favor. Um, I think this game is a toss-up, and I do. This is a good make the case, but I would have to take New England here, I think. I think Bill Belichick kind of says, let's get at least one, and then they tank the rest of the season. If historically owned Buffalo, too. Historically, I don't know how Bill, much you want to play into that. But historically, but... they had that Tom Brady guy there, too. That's, so. that's true. That's true. That's true. All right, who's next? <sighs> I'll, I'll go. Um, so, this is just the most – ridiculous spread i have ever seen in oh an NFL come game. on <laughs> and i'm gonna well which side am i going nick i don't know sam but i hope it's not the wrong side i'm going with the chiefs minus 19 and a half okay. against the jets which <laughs> it's like that's a that's a college spread right there that's like a that's like a clemson virginia tech spread like in uh, last or like something like that like just stab your own alma mater yeah come on they stink <laughs> But so yeah, the Jets did put up a fight last week against the uh, the Buffalo Bills. But Buffalo got six field goals in that game. They missed two, and so let's call it eight potential scoring drives. KC is not going to stall the way Buffalo did in that game. Then if they can just finish off drives and with touchdowns instead of um, field goals, it's going to get ugly really, really quick. The Chiefs have a better defense than Buffalo, and they still only score 10 points against Buffalo. I think this 
this is going to be one of the mo- more ugly games you'll ever see. <laughs> I mean, I it's going to get bad. I, you got to agree on this. The Jets, three of their seven losses have come by over 20 points, and they haven't played the Super Bowl, the reigning Super Bowl. I was like, who, the yet. Colts? Uh... I mean, in the, in, like you said, the last three outputs oh. that the Jets offense have given are 10 points, zero points, and 10 points. So, I mean, I can see this game being over by the second quarter. <clears throat> I see the, the Kansas That's City generous. Chiefs. The, I, the Kansas City Chiefs are going to be up big on halftime, and I just don't think it's it's going to go away. I don't like touching the game because the spread's so big, and last thing I need is a on sneaky backdoor cover. Um, but Yo, give me Chad Henney's over <clears throat> passing yards. He's going to get in that game at some point, just because they're going to be <laughs> over one point. It's going to be it's going to be like tw- it's going to be like twenty five. It, yeah. it might even be like fifty five because they know he's going to. Vegas probably expecting him to be in. Yeah, probably, probably. I agree on all fronts. You, you expect Lev Bell not to show up and just absolutely <laughs> no, run all over I, him? No, I do. I, I mean, do. even I if he honestly does, forgot about um, that. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Take into, the any... into account. Is there any argument other than this is a 19 and a half point spread to take the Jets? No. No. Yeah, no, no. It's just, it's just okay. the spread's so big. Like, okay. again, they're, they're just asking you to take it. I'm not I'm really on the same page, and I still can't fathom you're taking this pick. Like, it's – The it's spread tough. is so big. No, neither can I, really. Possible. It's so possible. I usually make a I usually make a teaser and I just like I'll put three teams in a teaser and just tease them mm-hmm. up the most I can to get like plus one twenty odds and I really wanted to put the Jets in there to get like the fourth team and better odds and, do and get it up to like tw- it would be like twenty six and a half but I'm not even, even confident that, not if they cover twenty six and a half right um, the one concern I have in this game right is this like does does uh eric Bieniemy and andy reed like open the playbook here and be like let's try some stuff that we know isn't going to work <laughs> against x y and z but it'll probably it, we'll, we'll get some looks against the jets right and at least when someone watches film of this game they're gonna be like ah they this is a setup here it didn't work on this play but they can run some other play off of it you know what does, does that make sense i, I could see maybe you? like yeah. when it's like 35 3 in the third quarter maybe but mm-hmm. i don't think they you don't think this is their the lab game, game doing that because okay. even like uh, Chris Jones said, like people for, people forget like they're a good football team <laughs> despite them. Being people on forget seven, that like, they people forget that they play football. <laughs> yeah, like oh, these guys are professionals. Oh, they should take it seriously. Like no, they shouldn't. They're terrible. I wish I could roll the Chiefs clip of Nick. Million. I wish I could roll the clip of Nick where he's like, the Jets out of a hundred have an efficiency of six. <laughs> <laughs> They're bad. Has that changed? Bro? Has that changed? I can't oh, imagine. No, no, no. I'll, 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 I'll right do some now. research. I'll do some research for next week. I'll let you know on a scale of zero to one hundred if they're still a six. <laughs> Honestly, they might have dropped a little bit further. <laughs> Especially after this week, they might have dropped a little bit further. Yeah, um, I'm glad you made the case for that because if we didn't touch on like the biggest spread that I've ever seen, then yeah, it's then I I feel like we'd be cheating the people if we didn't at least mention the 19 and a half point spread, which is probably going to go up, right? I, I would think that's probably going to. I be think it actually like opened at 21, so it has gone oh, it down. Oh down. my god, bro! Yeah, that's that's points. bad. How bad that's are bad. you? I think it's like the first time since like that undefeated um, Patriots team played like the Miami Dolphins or something like that. Yeah, it, it's 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 the biggest <laughs> spread in like eight nine years or something like that i think don't quote me um i guess we can move on from nick are both your make the case is still there uh i mean yeah i guess but I'll, I'll only talk about i'll talk about one of them and i'll touch on the i'll go quick with the other one so okay so you're gonna talk about both of them yeah i'll go real quick i'll, go, I'll, I'll make them <laughs> quick i won't i won't dabble on them like i usually dabble uh but my first one is going to be tennessee minus five and a half at the cincinnati Bengals. Uh, the Cincinnati Bengals have the 28th, 28th ranked rushing defense. They allow about 133 yards per game. How do you think that's going to bode well for Mr. Derrick Henry? Derrick Henry is smiling from ear to ear. So that's, I would say that's probably a pretty good thing if you're Derrick Henry. You're going to run all over this defense. Um, I, th- this game is going to be all strictly Derrick Henry. Uh, Ryan Tannehill is playing very well. He's 15 touchdowns, two interceptions. He has the best quarterback Uh, or uh, quarterback ranking in the red zone this year. Um, The team in general, the Tennessee Titans are averaging just over 31 points per game. Uh, I just don't really see a situation where this game is even close. The Bengals are five and 12 against the spread in their last 17 home games. And like I said, this, this is a huge King Henry game for me. Um, I think it's at least a touchdown victory for the Tennessee Titans. No disagreement for me there. Okay. 
All right, then I'm going to go real quick with my second one. My second one, this was going to be my actual make the case. It's going to be the Las Vegas Raiders plus two and a half at the mm, Cleveland Browns. I like Browns. that. I do. Um, this game for me is more about the Cleveland Browns than it is the Las Vegas Raiders. So the Cleveland Browns, are already, they're already banged up defensively. They've given up at least 30 points in five of their last seven games. Um, they almost lost to the Bengals last week. It took a miracle throw from Baker Mayfield uh, to Donovan Peoples-Jones, uh, a pretty sick throw and catch to, for them to win that football game. Um, <clears throat> three out of their five wins have come against the Cincinnati Bengals, the Washington football team, and the Dallas Cowboys, three very bad teams. Uh, losing OBJ isn't really a big hit, um, I guess, points-wise, but it really is scheme-wise. So even though OBJ hasn't been doing much offensively, he still gives a defensive coordinator something to think about. Scares you. It scares you. But now you have no OBJ. You have to worry about Jarvis Landry, uh, Donovan Peoples-Jones, Rashard Higgins. Uh, Austin Hooper I don't think is playing because he just had an appendectomy. So you're looking at I don't know who else. Um, you know what? An appendectomy. God's appendix removed. Good for him. Okay. Yes. So it's so it's really just Kareem Hunt in the backfield. You can't and, you can't play after that. There's no turnaround time on that. Uh, well, imagine he gets hit after he just gets surgery. No, I think that, ah. I think it, I took a few weeks. Like you gotta ah. be gotta be sitting. So I, I mean the Browns the third, and get the, out there. The, the Browns do have the third best rushing offense in the NFL, and that 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 is partially due when they had Chubb and Hunt at the same time. Um, but just having Hunt kind of is is different than having the two headed monster. Uh, Cleveland has a minus 21 point differential too. So their offense is anemic um, as, as many weapons as it does have. And listen, John Gruden, I think this is a, I think this is a, a trap game. If anybody wants to bet Cleveland, I, I, I like Las Vegas on the road here coming off of a bye week or no, they didn't, they got smacked by, they, they got, got smacked. smacked. They got smacked by Tampa Bay last week. And I, everyone kind of expected that um, even though they were full fledged, you know, ready to go, they got smacked around. I think this is their get right game. All right, um, so that's it. Those are easy money and uh, make the case picks for this week in week eight. We're going to move on to the Sunday night game. Um, and I apologize in advance for these next two primetime games as they include three-fourths <laughs> of the <laughs> NFC East. Uh, um, first one, probably the most unbearable from a public perspective, probably not from a personal perspective from the people doing this podcast. But uh, we got Dallas visiting Philadelphia the line opened at Philly minus three and a half. It's now Philly minus nine. I don't oh. think there was any major injury news. That I think that's that Dalton being like officially yeah. out. Well, there's that. That's the I'm questionability. Not... Um, we Game have point. Ben DiNucci stepping in if Dalton's not ready. Uh, James Madison it's alum. He actually played Monmouth um, in the, I believe, FCS playoffs, FBS playoffs, whichever one's not the big one. That matters, FCS. apparently. FCS. Um, but yeah, no, that, look, I said last week after picking Dallas two weeks in a row that I'm not picking Dallas anymore. Um, but this is going to be the game they win against everybody's judgment. They have to cover eventually, right? No, they have right? to cover no. eventually. Right? No, I mean, no, they don't. If you about a cover, I feel like Dallas, you, uh, you could make a case for Dallas to cover nine here. I'm not going to make the case for it. They couldn't huh. do it last week against Washington. They scored three points, count them three on one hand. Um, no, I'm going to go Dallas minus – I mean, Philly minus nine, I think. Mm -hmm. it, it's just going to run away with it. They're, they're literally just going to run away with this game. The like, Dallas, ha Dallas has the worst defense in the league on top of one of the most anemic offenses. Now you're putting in a third-string quarterback who last played for James Madison University, which is a Division I AA team. Um, but they're like the best JV team in college football. Correct. Oh, oh. Yeah, South Dakota right. State would like to have a word. Yeah, I, I, got, I gotta Dakota. get. Oh, I, I forgot about North Dakota State. So then, North yes, Dakota State. So, so. it's North Dakota State. Honestly, I don't even it's know. North Dakota NDSU. Yeah, I just don't think it's close. Um, um I, I think Philly just runs away with it. Carson Wentz is supposed to be getting Jalen Rager back too. Uh, Philly's defense is actually pretty decent. I think they're gonna get to Ben DiNucci. They, as long as they stop Ezekiel Elliott, they're gonna be fine. And I'm not even. I'm not even worried about it. They. Anonymous Cowboys players two weeks ago now said, quote, they don't teach, right? That doesn't ring confident. I, I feel like you don't have to teach Andy Dalton, right? He's been doing it long enough. You probably don't have to teach Dak Prescott because he's probably good enough to get away with talent on himself. You might have to teach those guys a little bit of like scheme here and there, right? Uh, the mechanic stuff, right? You probably should teach Ben DiNucci 
uh, considering his background and what he's coming from. And now he's got to step in in a division game on the road in Philly where he's going to get batteries thrown at him. Um, to, that to, probably to be, hurts. Uh, probably to be a competent quarterback those those words ring with me more this week than they did last week um i don't think the staff can get ben denucci ready to win a game uh on prime time um and if you look at the offense for dallas like darius slay takes away a wide receiver right the the philly corner um this is about bad cowboys offensive line against a solid eagles pass rush and zeke is struggling so like i i don't see how the the cowboys can can score a point let alone nine within the whatever the eagles score unless it's like a 10 nothing game all right so game. the the who guess the person who's coming in for ben denucci when he gets out is garrett gilbert who played for smu mm. oh. garrett gilbert come on yeah, you don't know. Yeah, come on. They also signed Cooper Rush to the practice squad. Who is? Yeah, he's been Dallas's fifth string quarterback for about yeah. seven years now. Dallas yeah, you know what he is. He's good in the film room. All right. That's fair. But he was right, also in the Giants practice wait, squad. Wait, 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 followed, wait, 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 wait. We have to hear Garrett. what Sam's got to say. We got to hear what Sam's got to say because he's not talking over there, which I don't like. So like, oh god, it's these Sinai football like NFC East matchups. Like, I feel like despite how big of a blowout people are expecting a lot of times there is a good fight from the underdog but despite that the Cowboys are I would say that if they at all respected Mike McCarthy as a coach which I don't think they do so I, I'm actually tagging along Philadelphia minus nine. <laughs> Sam, don't you string me along. I wanted, I wanted to scare you a little bit. You gotta, don't you string me along like that. <laughs> I like it. All right so we are going into week eight. Um and the Cowboys do not have a bye coming up. So you're telling me if Ben DiNucci starts week eight, week nine, and week 10, he already has more games at quarterback in a Dallas uh, uniform than his offensive coordinator, Kellen Moore, does. And that just goes off of Mano's point. <laughs> How is Kellen Moore, who played three games, started two of them in a Cowboys uniform, going to tell? I get he's the coach, and I get I'm sure he's experienced and qualified pretty good to be one. there. It's fine. Pretty good one. Fine, but most people think he's a pretty good one. I don't think he's a pretty good one. But if you look at a guy like Ben DiNucci, who only has D1 AA experience, which he's a good quarterback and he's got legs too. I don't know if it was just in college, but I got legs. He's got legs. Yeah, I mean, well, you're you should call up the Dallas Cowboys and Jerry Jones. <laughs> Honestly, I, yeah, I when you're wait. done, it's when me. you're done on Sunday, you can call up the Giants and play on their front line. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. I'm just gonna echo what you said. Like it. What is what is Kellen Dallas Moore that has 104 lines. passes? in the NFL going to do for a guy like Ben DiNucci. Kellen Moore won the Orange Bowl at Boise State. I don't care. That was cool. That's pretty chill. He also that's when, he did the, that's when they did the Statue team. of Liberty, I think. Oh, I think that's it was the right. hook and ladder. It was, it was, it was both been, in the same game. Been, I think he – oh, was it really? Oh, then he yeah. – I think he did. I think he did. Yeah, they, they – it was the end of regulation. They had the hook and ladder and then nice. on two-point conversion and overtime. Nice. For the, do, we see, do we see a hook and ladder between any of those wide receivers? Ben DiNucci, I'll be DeCooper. surprised if they can even get into the red zone. If we see an attempt at a hook and ladder, I will eat one of my hats. All right. <laughs> you All right. you threatened to eat a lot of clothing, and I haven't seen you do it yet. <laughs> yeah, well, listen. Okay, I said I would eat my shoe if DeAndre Baker somehow got away with his uh, armed robbery case, and that's still up in the air. So, like, does that make you nervous that it's still up in the air? No. Can I add on to that real quick? No. Since we have a forum. No, you don't eat any more of the shoe or anything. Okay. But since we have a video forum to broadcast this to, can you do it live on podcast? You have to. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah sure. Yeah. Okay. If they attempt the hook and ladder, I will, I will be happy. Well, if you know how to mess with guys, any I'll legal you, processes I'll you, I'll um, you and you're out there. You can, you can pick a hat. If you can help get DeAndre Baker off of uh, – Oh, no, 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 not that. Not yeah, that. yeah, somebody that. do that. Somebody get him out. If somebody, somebody can get, get it off, you will be able to see Anthony Mano eat Tim's – Live on air <laughs> on Caps on Sports Podcast. All right, whatever. I'm going to wrap up this clown so. show and move it on to Tampa Bay versus the New York Giants, Monday Night Football <laughs> at 8.15. I don't even know what we the line to? is right now. It doesn't show. It opened up at Tampa Bay minus 8.5. Um, the I think it's entire, now like 11 or 12. Yeah, the whole entire Giants offensive line got um, – well, Will Hernandez got coronavirus. The whole line was in contact with him, so they were all sent home along with two assistant coaches. Um, 
It is now Friends. minus 12. Yeah, it's now minus 12. Whatever it is, the overset at 47 and a half, that might change as well. But for me, I don't give a shit what this line is. Um, as long as it's not above 14. If you touch 14, I'll take it. Maybe buy it down to 13 and a half. But if that touches 14 and a half, then I just will stay away from this game. I'm not taking the Giants, but I will bet the Tampa Bay Bucks anywhere from what it is now, even lower, up to 13 and a half. That's, that'll be my threshold for this game. I don't care that Godwin's not there. It, uh, the Giants are just not good. This is the game the Giants are going to get blown out. They've been the in almost get blown every out. single game. The Giants could get blown out. The Giants have the worst home against the spread coverage percentage, which is 17% over the last three seasons. They've only covered 17% of the spreads when they play at home. And they're 1-12 in 12 as home underdogs. This game isn't going to be even close. It's not going to – I don't even want to watch it. Daniel I, Jones I might break every bone in his body this week. I hope I'm working that night so I don't have to watch it. <laughs> So I'm ugly. taking the Buccaneers minus 12 too. This yeah. defense, I, I mean, I, I can say it for like the nth week in a row. This defense is far and away the best defense in the league, right? They have dominant pass rush. They have a phenomenal secondary. Daniel Jones is the quarterback of probably the worst or second worst offense in the league. Um, They're not going to put up points. Nope. And nope. It's gonna the be Buccaneers, the, 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 as good as as good as the Giants' defense has been, like or as as better as they've been this year, you can only hold an offense like that for so long, right? Two touchdowns, like it doesn't bad. do it for it's it doesn't really do it bad. for me. Really Even if bad. the Giants' defense holds Tampa to what like 21, 24 mm-hmm. points, like yeah, the Giants might get three. Yeah. I mean, and like you yeah. said, no Chris Godwin, it doesn't matter. The Giants mm-hmm. couldn't contain Greg Ward Jr. when it mattered, so like it. <laughs> It doesn't matter. Yeah, throw Mike Evans and Gronk and O.J. Howard. The Giants' only hope really is to score points on special teams and defense. I will give credit where credit is due. I haven't yelled at my TV for leaving a tight end wide open over the seam like I have in years past. So, but at I least I don't have to worry TV for my tight end not catching a football. Oh well, yeah, that's hand. yeah, that's a that's a different uh, that's a different. Oh scenario. my god. So, if this Giants offensive line can't go, I mean, it doesn't make that big of a difference. They stink anyway. No, oh, they suck no. already. They're so Is it bad. an improvement if one of them can't go? At least, like, if you're on the defensive <laughs> line, you're like, man, I haven't seen this guy yet. What's he got? Maybe <laughs> you're going at him. For, maybe you're trying to figure him out for, like, five, six plays, and then you get a pass rush going. And like Dominican Sue is going to go like this, and the whole line's going to fall backwards like it's a folding chair. <laughs> I said, uh, one of one of my buddies texted me the the news, and uh, before I saw it, and he was like, "What are the Giants gonna do?" I said, "They're gonna put a they're gonna put a a highway divider uh, as the offensive line." <laughs> so at the very least, the Buccaneers have to jump over it. That's actually uh, not a bad Daniel idea. Jones. That's that probably really not better than idea. what they got. Right. right, but even like even twelve, like you can probably count on Daniel Jones making a mistake and putting them putting the Buccaneers in good enough field position oh, to like even if even if, the, even if the Giants even if the Giants are like holding them to like six points or like seven points after like a quarter or like a quarter and a half, right? Daniel Jones is going to do something where stupid they're going to get the ball in the thirty <laughs> and they're going to. They're gonna go up. They're they're gonna go up more. I'd be shocked if the Giants score. I'd be shocked if they cover, and I'd be I am so angry. shocked if they won. I hate talking about the New York Football Giants. All right, so we're all in agreement here on Bucks. Well, minus Sammy whatever. didn't speak yet. No, I said Bucks. Oh, okay, said thank Bucks. God. Sorry, I didn't want I I didn't want to have to have a heart attack live here on podcast. But <laughs> <laughs> all right, so um, yeah, that just about wraps up this episode of the Caps on Sports podcast. This is NFL Week Eight. Um, you can check us out on social media, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, um, YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and CapsOnSports.com. Um, all the social handles are Caps on Sports. Pretty simple, straightforward. Um, we like streamlining things over here. But um, anyways, final thoughts before I completely wrap this up? Squares, triangles? I don't know. Nope. I went 11-3 and three last week in my picks, so ha! There you go. All right. For Tyler Blumenstick, Sam Meehan, Nick Tobias, and Anthony Mano, uh, this has been the Caps on Sports podcast, and we will see you next week.